remain standing for the invocation by Reverend Jamie Michaels from the United Old South Methodist Church. Will you please join me in a spirit of prayer or reverence? Spirit of peace, be with us this day. Comfort all who mourn today and share your tender presence with those whose service separates them from their loved ones. Protect all who would serve their neighbors, even risking their lives in that service. Give counsel to our nation's leaders and to the leaders of all nations. Write your peace on their hearts and move them toward wisdom to the end that war and violence should cease and the earth should be painted with the colors of harmony and peace. O oh, great mover, move our hearts to serve one another in the examples of those who we remember here today. May their sacrifices sow the seeds of peace, growing trees whose shade gives us rest. All these things we pray in the name of the one whose power is love. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Michaels. Please be seated. <laughs> Memorial Day is all about remembering. As we begin our service today, I would like to remember a special veteran we lost just four days after last Memorial Day. Frank Driscoll was our custodian of soldiers, sailors, and graves. He was a decorated Marine who proudly served in Vietnam and was a recipient of the Purple Heart. For over 15 years, Frank's passion was to ensure that every veteran's grave in Reading's four cemeteries received a veteran's marker, flag, and flower. I ask you please to join me in a moment of silence to remember Frank as he helped us for so many years to remember those that have gone before us. Thank you. I now welcome Shriya Bajaj. Shriya is a Reading Project 351 ambassador, which is a youth service organization. She will present the Governor's Memorial Day Proclamation. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation. Whereas, while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives celebrating the first Decoration Day. And, whereas, after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country. Renamed Memorial Day, the last Monday in May, is when people remember and honor the memory of all men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. And, whereas, Throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And, whereas, their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And, whereas, it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Govern Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim May 27, 2019, to be Memorial Day, and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston, this first day of May, in the year 2019, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 242nd, by His Excellency, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth, God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts.
Thank you very much, Shreya. 151 years ago, retired Union General John Logan organized the first National Decoration Day to honor the fallen after the Civil War. This has become our Memorial Day. I would now like to invite Allison Powell from Reading Memorial High School to read General Logan's Memorial Day General Orders. John A. Logan's Memorial Day Order, number 11. Headquarters Grand Army of the Republic, Washington, D.C., May 5th, 1868. The 30th of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion, and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet church yard in the land. In this observance, no form of ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will, in their own way, arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized, comrades, as our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among other things, of preserving and strengthening whose kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this result than by cherishing the tenderly memory of our heroic day and who made the breast of barricade between our country and foe? Their lives were in the reverie of freedom to erase in chains and the death at tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard their graves with sacred diligence. All that consecrated wealth and taste of the nation can add to the adornment and security is but a fitting tribute to the memory of their slain defenders. Let no warranted foot tread rudely on such hollow ground. Let pleasant paths in the bright, becoming and going of reverend visitors and found them and found more. Let no abandonment of erudice or neglect, no ravages of time, testify to the present or the coming generations that we have forgotten and achieved the cost of the free and the divided of it. If other eyes grow dull and other hands slack, and other hearts cold and foam and crust, ours shall keep well as long as the light and warmth of life remain in us. Let us then, as time is wanted, gather around their sacred their sacred remains, and garland the passionless mounds above them the choicest flowers of springtime. Let us rise above them, the dear old flag they saved from dishonor. Let us, in this solemn presence, renew our pledges and aid and assist those whom they have left among us as sacred cherishes upon the nation's gratitude, the soldiers and the sailors, widow and orphan. Thank you, Allison. The high school band will now perform America the Beautiful. introduce Vanessa Alvarado, Chair of the Reading Select Board for Memorial Day Address. Good 
morning, and welcome to Reading's Memorial Day Commemoration Services. I am honored to be speaking to you today in memory of those we have lost in service to our country. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our distinguished guest speaker, Brigadier General Jack Hammond. Thank you for your service, your patriotism, and your continued dedication to our country. And I thank you for joining us today in honor of our fallen heroes. Senator John Thune said, I believe our flag is more than just cloth and ink. It is a universally recognized symbol that stands for liberty and freedom. It is the history of our nation, and it's marked by the blood of those who died defending it. Those like Reading resident Private Roy J. Sherrod, born in 1923 and lived just down the road at 13 Washington Street. He graduated from the local high school in 1942 and was an avid football player. When he enlisted in the U.S. Army shortly after graduating, he joined the 502nd Parachute Infantry 101st Airborne Division, the Screaming Eagles. Just a few years later, he would be assigned to destroy a German Coast Artillery battery on D-Day. Private Sherrod was one of the over 4,400 men who died in action that June day in 1944. He was awarded the Purple Heart and was 21 years old. This year marks the 75th anniversary of D-Day. To Private Sherrod and the almost 100 Reading residents who have died in the line of duty, I give my deepest gratitude. They served with honor and paid the highest price to defend the liberties of their fellow citizens. We all stand here today due to their bravery and the bravery of all of the women and men who have worn a military uniform. For those of us who love the people in that uniform, they were not just a soldier. They were our sons and daughters, sisters and brothers, parents and loved ones. We are proud of their skill, their strength, and their commitment. And we remember them not just on Memorial Day, but every day. Today, we gather as a community to celebrate their lives and mourn their passing. For in their passing, we are reminded to cherish our freedom, our democracy, and an America where our rights are unassailable. I will leave you with this quote from American poet Joseph Rodman Drake. And they, for who their country die, shall fill an honored grave. For glory lights the soldier's tomb, and beauty weeps the brave. Thank you for being here today and for honoring our fallen. Thank you, Vanessa. I now welcome Jill Mayberry, United States Air Force, who will read the roll call of honor. Good morning. These are the veterans that have passed away since last Memorial Day. Paul Andreessen, Charles Adams, Robert Bauer, William Brownlow, John Carley, Gerald Colford, Donald Cripps, William Cummings, Donald Daphne, Francis Driscoll, James Fandel, David Ferris, Robert Griffin, John Jacobus, Arnold Knox, Chan Martin, Joseph McDonald, George McGarity, Anthony Melius, Herbert Monto, Enzo Nanny, Willard Nichols, Burton Quimby, John Quinlan, Richard Rizzo, Bernard Reichlick, Richard Surrett, John Turney, Francis Walsh, Walsh, John Watson, Robert Gilligan, Martin R. Hanley Jr., Dennis R. Hauser, Russell J. Lafave, Peter Muse, and Henry J. 
roulette. Thank you, Jill. Thomas Fenley, VFW Post Commander, will now place a wreath in remembrance of all our fallen heroes. I have one public service announcement. Many of the names that Jill just read were World War II and Korean veterans. There is a wonderful program called Honor Flight New England that provides free trips to Washington, D.C. for these veterans to see their memorials. Several Reading residents recently returned from this trip and have said to me it was one of the best days of their life. To the World War II and Korean veterans in the audience here, please consider going. To all who have parents, aunts, or uncles from that era, please mention them to them and encourage them to sign up. Applications are online at honorflightnewengland.org or you can please contact me in the town hall. I can, I can help you out. At this time, I would like to introduce Brigadier General Retired Jack Hammond. General Hammond is a 1979 graduate of Reading Memorial High School. During his distinguished 31-year military career in the U.S. Army, General Hammond commanded troops from the platoon to brigade level during peace and wartime. And he was the first Massachusetts officer to achieve the rank of general officer in a combat theater since World War II. General Hammond had multiple combat glorious unit award with Oak Leaf to include battalion commands in both Sunni Triangle and Fallujah, Iraq as the commanding general for the U.S. forces in Kabul province, Afghanistan. General Hammond is the recipient of numerous military awards including the Distinguished Service Medal, the Legion of Merit, Bronze Star Medal, Army Commendation Medal for Valor, the Laureus Unit Award, Combat Action Badge, French Medal of De National Defense, and Bulgarian Medal of Mission Support. General Hammond has served as the Executive Director of the Home Base Program since his retirement from the U.S. Army in 2012. During this time, he has presented at the White House Summit on Veterans and Military Family Mental Health President Bush's Veteran Stand To Summit advised President Obama's Commission on Military Benefits in Retirement and served on Governor Charlie Baker's Health Care Transition Team and Veteran Advisory Council. General Hammond holds a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Massachusetts, a Master's degree in Healthcare Marketing from Boston University, and was a National Security Fellow at Harvard University. General Hammond, Redding, Redding is honored to have you join us today. That's not bad for a C-plus student from Redding High, huh? <laughs> I'd like to, uh, first of all, thank Kevin for inviting me here today and recognize, obviously, our uh, members of the select board for coming today, my fellow veterans, the students of Redding, and of course, you fine ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful day to celebrate Memorial Day. And I want to thank you all for taking the time to remember and honor the one million men and women who have died for this nation. Think about that for a moment. One million soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, each of whom sacrificed all of their tomorrows so that we can enjoy our todays. They stepped up to serve as freedom's guardian and were called upon to make the ultimate sacrifice in order to safeguard the freedoms that we enjoy today and sometimes take for granted. 
I am deeply uh, honored for this opportunity to speak with you this Memorial Day as I recently moved back to Reading after a 35-year hiatus. I grew up in what was once known as the Mudville area of Reading, and I was walking the dog there uh, just last week, and I noticed a wonderful memorial the two brothers, I believe, the Doucette brothers who grew up in Mudville, and one was killed in action in World War II, the other was killed in action in Korea. And that demonstrates some of the commitment of this town to continue to honor that service and sacrifice. Reading has always been home to me and my family, and it represents a very special place. It is now also the home of my grandson, Wyatt, who attends the Barrows Elementary School. I'm, ex I'm extremely pleased that he can see that this town still holds sacred these values and for the men and women who served and sacrificed for this nation. In keeping with this recognition, I'd like to ask each of our veterans and Gold Star family members present to please raise their hands so we can recognize you for your service and sacrifice. We are especially pleased to have members of our greatest generation. I believe Mr. Nelson Burbank, a member of the greatest generation who flew more than 30 combat missions in Europe during World War II has joined us as well. Thank you each. You met these men and women honor us greatly with their presence. Thank you. A moment ago we heard General Logan's charge to the American people to establish a national day of recognition for our fallen comrades in 1868. Like most generals, he's hard to follow. He's a little bit flowery and it's difficult to transition the language, but the intent of his words were very clear. We must never forget our fallen heroes and we must never forget to care for their spouses, their widows, and their orphans. That's what decent people do and that's what we do here in this town and across this nation. General Logan would be greatly pleased to see that more than 150 years later that this, this Memorial Day, this day of observance is still followed and we still honor our fallen. We shall never forget those who did not return. It's truly important. For those of us who have survived the crucible of war, this is a day of mixed emotions. Oftentimes, we think about past comrades. Sometimes we think about battles fought. But we also think of those who were left behind. And what a terrible, difficult day this must be for each of them. Ceremonies like today, however, validate that their soldier's sacrifice had meaning. General Logan would be proud to see that people still assembled to honor that sacrifice. In preparation for this Memorial Day, I joined a group of people at, on Wednesday at the Boston Common to place more than 37,000 American flags, each representing a Massachusetts service member who was killed in action. The section of the park was instantly transformed into hallowed ground, serving as a solemn reminder of the true intent of this holiday. Thursday morning, each of the names of those who died since September 11th were read aloud by their family or friends in a ceremony attended by both the governor and the mayor. There was a heart-shaped garden of stones placed adjacent to the flags, depicting the names of the post-9-11 fallen. These stones were prepared by students from across the Commonwealth in a very unique and symbolic gesture. In a quick glance down at the garden, I recognized the, ten na the names of 10 warriors who either served in my commands or alongside me in Iraq and Afghanistan. It is sometimes difficult for veterans to convey their emotional tie to Memorial Day. Regardless of their age, this day brings back a flood of memories of both current and old soldiers. Some of these memories are fond, most are of lost comrades. Some of these, each time we bury a soldier, we think of friends and comrades lost in war. Brave young Americans who have given up their hopes, dreams, and tomorrows so that we can enjoy our today. Everything that we value in this nation of ours was made possible by the men and women represented by the flag sitting on Boston Common today. We can never repay the debt we owe to our fallen warriors or their families, but we can certainly guarantee that they are remembered. Seven years ago, I retired from the Army and was asked to lead an organization called Home Base, which is a partnership between the Boston Red Sox and MGH. Home Base became the nation's first private sector clinic focused solely on healing the invisible wounds of war. We provide this world-class care to veterans from all combat areas and actively serving members of the military, their families, their children. All of this care is provided at no cost. We have a new emerging program, 
that treats our families of the fallen. This is on top of the 300 people each year, the 3,500 that we've grown to and over 20,000 men and women home bases serve. This is to fulfill the commitment to General Logan. Most recently, we developed a program to treat families of our fallen, some of the most injured people I've ever met in my life. Young women whose husbands have taken their life based on the fact they lost the war back home. Women aged roughly 26, 28 to 32 with children who saw the violent death. This program resulted as a result of a phone call from a girl I went to Reading High with whose husband had taken his life after a difficult tour in Iraq as a Marine Cobra pilot. She asked me to create a clinical program for the families of our fallen, which we eagerly took forward. General Logan, and you may have heard this a moment ago, eloquently, more eloquently put this by saying, let us in solemn presence renew our pledges to aid and assist those who have left among us as a sacred charges upon our nation's gratitude, the soldiers and sailors, widow and orphan. You'd be proud to see that we continue to look after our families as decent people do. Throughout the course of history, the men and women of Reading have upheld these ancient honors. 400 sons of Reading fought during the Civil War to save the Union that Joshua Eaton died helping to develop during our revolution. The memorial here at Laurel Hill Cemetery commemorates this continued history of service. From the muddy shores of Normandy to the tropical heat of Bataan, the frozen mountains of Korea, the jungles of Vietnam, the mountains of Afghanistan, and the desert of Iraq, Americans have sacrificed their lives in the name of freedom to safeguard this nation. Once each year in May, we gather at the graves of our fallen heroes in public ceremonies such as this, in order to honor and recognize these selfless acts. Each of these American patriots place the needs of our country above their own and paid the ultimate price for our freedom. In recognition for this, we hold parades and ceremonies as a gesture from the American people to show how proud we are of their sacrifice. By doing so, we bring their deeds to light and demonstrate that these selfless and heroic acts matter and, what, and that, they, that we remain a free nation today because of their actions. Therefore, I want to thank you once again for making time to be here to remember our fallen. I hope you enjoy the freedoms you have been given. A very high price was paid for each of these. Honor your country and always remember our defenders and their families. In doing so, our soldiers will be blessed to know that their sacrifice had true meaning and their families will have some solace. Thank you and may God bless this nation and its people. Kendra will go on to specialize in combat photography. 
I would like to take this opportunity to recognize and to thank Kendra for the honorable path she has chosen. chosen. We wish you all the best. Be safe. Come back to visit us on Veterans Day. And remember, once a Marine, always a Marine. Memorial High School Band will now perform the Battle Hymn of the Republic, followed by Taps. our services here today. Again, I want to thank you all for, for taking the time to attend and to remember. I'd like to thank all those who participated in today's ceremonies. For the band, great job as always. And I'd like to call out the, the amazing cemetery grounds crew who, did up, who teamed up with the Parks Department to once again do a tremendous job to prepare 52 acres in our four cemeteries for what they do for today and then all year round. Well done. Thank you to Raymond Boyd, our new Soldiers and Sailors Graves Officer, and a small army of volunteers who carried out General Logan's orders and decorated over 2,200 graves in town. Thank you to all the scouts and volunteers who put out flags and flowers on Saturday in record time. Well done. Thanks to Caitlin Driscoll, Frank's daughter, who was with us the whole way to help carry out Frank's legacy. Well done. Thank you to the Reading Select Board, Town Manager Robert Delasher, and Assistant Town Manager, Jean Delios, for their support of veterans throughout the year.
God bless all those that have gone before us and all those currently serving to protect our freedoms. Ceremonies will continue at Forest Glen Cemetery at 1045, Charles Lawn Cemetery at 11.30, and Wood End Cemetery at 12 noon. Again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Good, well, pretty good, pretty yeah. good. Pretty good. Yeah. Good. Quick trip, Michael.